Uh, hi, I'm Doug Ward, um, and I'm here to demo a brand new website building engine that's uh, sitting here on a test server. Um, it's a website builder like you've never seen before. It uses interesting new algorithms, and uh, I think you'll begin to see a spot for it. Immediately. Um, but before I do the demo, I'd like to introduce uh, some an idea or two. Um, starting with a story about a friend of mine from the Los Angeles arts community warehouse days. Um, he called himself Duncan. Uh, Duncan made a fortune. And when I knew him, he was uh, on the rebound. Um, but the way he made his fortune is really instructive, I think. Uh, here's the story. Um, back in the uh, second part of the 1960s, when uh, the hate, hate Ashbury, was just beginning to seep into public consciousness, um, Duncan was in a, a van traveling around Arizona, going from reservation to reservation, buying up every single turquoise and silver necklace he could get his hands on. And not only did he buy, did he buy up these necklaces and talk to everybody about whether they friends made necklaces and you know proceed from Hogan to Hogan but he also um, ordered more uh, left orders for more left money down and uh, and in the in the month or two he was there uh, collected quite a, a number of these things and uh, drove his van back to Los Angeles and arrived in Los Angeles just about the time that pictures of young hippie girls in the hate were hitting things like Time Magazine and Life Magazine. And, um, and they were wearing turquoise necklaces encrusted in silver made by American Indians. <clears throat> and so, um, all the upscale department stores in the United States were out scouring around looking for these things and <clears throat> they all found that they had to deal with Duncan and so that's how he made his fortune and he had a house in the canyons and in LA and he he was a really rich guy and living a really um, interesting wonderful lifestyle there for a long time and so when I knew him, he was on the rebound, and that's another long story. But anyway, the, um, while I knew him, uh, one weekend he persuaded me to take him up to uh, visit an acquaintance in around Los Gatos for the weekend. And so we drove up there, and we drove up a canyon, and we went to this guy's house, which is on a on a ridge looking out over everything. And um, and the way this guy made the money to, ha to have a house on a ridge overlooking everything was that he was the first guy to take these little plumbing washers that you use to repair faucets and their screws and the other little hardware that goes with faucets and other um, home plumbing things. He took those out of the back of the trucks of plumbers and put them into little plastic bags and he, put, and he hung the little plastic bags on hooks, and the hooks were on carousels that you could turn around. And these things were all constructed nicely and, and looked, uh, you know, great. And then he went around selling these things to all the hardware stores. And in 1967, 68, maybe, when this was going on, um, or maybe earlier, 65, there were, the United States was full of mom and pop 
hardware stores. There just wasn't any other kind of hardware store, even the big cities. And this guy offered a complete service. You know, he brought in the carousel, beautiful, set it up, did the bookkeeping. Whenever they called him, uh, he'd send somebody to restock it. And uh, there he was, perched on the canyon. Um, so anyway, the deal we were talking about didn't ever go, th you know, didn't ever culminate. But uh, there's one other thing about that guy. He, we, he took us out on his deck, and we looked out over the adjoining neighborhood. And he was looking, looking down, you know. And there was a guy whose house was a little bit below his, but corner of his lot was, you know, we could look right over the fence into the corner of his lot, kind of an oak studded place. And he said, uh, oh yeah, that's the new computer guy, Stephen Jobs house. So, what, I mean, what I'm trying to get at is that both of these guys uh, had a product and that product was adopted by a social change. Like, they caught the wave of a social change, and they had a product that was uh, integral to that social change. In the case of Duncan, it was counterculture. In the case of this guy, it was the do-it-yourselfer craze that followed people actually owning their own homes after World War II. And um, and so both of these guys caught the wave, and they had little tiny products, little tiny pieces of the niche of of the bigger you know realm of things. But they all they both did very well. Now I want to introduce a product. Oh, by the way, and Duncan uh, Duncan he said you know. He, he grew up in retail, and he said, you know, you go out to these guys, and, you, and the first thing they say is, you got product? What do you got? You got product? You know, and then he said, all right, and then you sit down about the second thing they say is, uh, retail schmetail. What does it cost? So anyway, um, so I have product, you know. I have a, a really revolutionary way of building websites. Um, kind of a halfway between software as a service and uh, and social networking. I mean, a machine, an engine that does things really fast, makes websites really fast. And I'd like to demo it. So let me do that. It's on the test server here, and uh, there'll be a little segue, and uh, we'll go on and show you what it does. Thank you for so far for uh, listening to me.